This solved example focuses on concepts in liquidity trading risk with the end goal of arriving at the liquidity adjusted VAR of a given portfolio. Okay, We are given that an investor has the following positions. A long position on stock A. This position is worth $8,000 captured at the mid price of stock A. The daily volatility of stock A is given to be 1.1%. Also, the investor has a short position in stock B. Again, captured at the mid prices, this short position at the moment is worth $10,000. The daily volatility of stock B is given to be 1.8%. Okay. Also, please note, we are given that the proportional bid offer spreads of stock A and stock B can be assumed to be normally distributed with the following parameters. The mean and the standard deviation of the proportional bid offer spread of stock A and stock B are given to us. If you recall, the proportional bid offer spread is defined to be something like this. S is equal to P ask minus P bid. This is the dollar bid offer spread that divided by P mid. P mid we know is the average of P ask and P bid. Okay, so the proportional bid offer spread is essentially the dollar bid offer spread divided by the mid price. And we are given that this S is normally distributed with respectively these parameters for stock A and stock B. Now, our end goal is to arrive at the liquidity adjusted VAR for this portfolio. But let's begin on a very simple note. Let's begin by assuming a normal market, a market in which bid offer spreads can be treated to be to a large extent certain. Okay, they can be predicted to a high level of certainty, I mean. And this first question is about finding out or calculating the cost of liquidating this portfolio in a normal market in which the realized spreads can be assumed to be approximately constant at a level which is close to the mean levels which have been tabulated here. Okay, so let's begin. If I were to capture the dollar value of this entire portfolio of my investor, I can capture it like this. My investor's portfolio is equal to the dollar value of position A plus the dollar value of position B. The dollar value of position A, because it's a long position, is plus 8,000. The dollar value of position B, because it's a short position, is minus 10,000. Okay, so net net, the risk system of this investor would show the total value. I'm not talking about PL here, I'm talking about market value. Okay, the risk system would show the total market value of the portfolio as of today to be minus $2,000. Again, please note that this market value is arrived at assuming mid prices. Okay, so for this particular question, we'll be assuming that SA, the spread, the proportional bid offer spread for stock A is 0 0.01, the mean, and the proportional bid offer spread for stock B is 0 0.02. Okay, now if the investor really does go to the market to liquidate this portfolio, Let's try and calculate what is the net cash flow that he is in for. Okay, so when he tries to liquidate the long position in stock A, that means he has to sell this long stock position. When he sells this position, he'll be hitting upon the bid price. Okay, remember bid and ask from the market maker's perspective are prices such that the market maker buys at the bid and sells at the ask. So when you go and sell this position, you'll be hitting upon the bid price. Okay, so 
when he hits upon the bid price 8000 was a number which was assuming a mid price therefore the actual dollar amount realized when stock a is sold will be equal to 8000 adjusted proportionally downwards by half the spread we have to move from mid to bid okay and that is why we have multiplied 8000 by 1 minus 0 0.01 divided by 2 okay this is the cash flow received when stock a is sold similarly to close out the short position in stock b the investor would have to buy back stock b to return back to the counterparty from whom this stock was borrowed okay so when the investor tries to buy back stock b he'll be hitting upon the ask price and therefore if 10000 was captured at the mid price it will have to be proportionally adjusted upwards by half the spread to arrive at the correct you know, dollar value of this position when calculated at the ask price therefore to buy back stock b the investor would have to pay this amount this is the amount received this is the amount paid okay so net net what is the cash flow for the investor 8000 minus 10000 that's minus 2000 8000 times this guy that's minus 40 minus 10000 times this guy it's minus 100 okay see the net cash flow is kind of telling us that we are experiencing or realizing the minus 2000 which our risk system was showing to us and alongside we are also paying 40 for liquidating stock A and 100 for liquidating stock B position. Okay, so this minus 40 minus 100 in total 140, I can think of it to be a cost of liquidation. Okay, and since I am defining it as a cost, I am not taking into account the minus sign. Okay, what is the lesson learned from this analysis that we have done the lesson learned is that in general i can define the cost of liquidation of a portfolio which contains these many positions n positions each of value vi to be equal to this guy okay essentially what we are doing here is we are taking only the dollar size the magnitude of any given position we are not taking into account whether it's a long or a short. We are taking the absolute value of the dollar value of the position. Okay, so we are taking the absolute value, multiplying it with half the proportional spread and we are adding it across all n positions in our portfolio. It's teaching us this lesson that although our positions may be offsetting in nature and hence provide us with some kind of a diversification benefit, when it comes to cost of liquidation, we are always on the wrong side of the market. Cost of liquidation always tends to add up irrespective of whether we are talking about a long position or a short position because in the end we are working with absolute value of any given individual position okay so this is the lesson learned from this first question let's move on to the next question and this question gets us back to a situation in which I need to treat my proportional bid offer spread to be random okay so in this second question I'm asked to calculate the spread risk factor for stock A at 99% confidence and the 99% confidence interval of the liquidation cost of stock A. Okay, so we are saying that the proportional bid ask spread of stock A is normally distributed with these parameters and we have to find the spread risk factor and the 99% confidence interval for the liquidation cost of stock A position okay so what is spread risk factor to understand this guy go back to the previous question in which we started with 8000 
and we multiplied it with 1 minus half the spread to shift from a mid price valuation to a bid price valuation. Okay, take a look at this factor. Ignore the sign, just this factor and move back to this world in which the spreads are random. Okay, so define the spread risk factor to be half the quantile spread picked from the distribution of this SA, let's call it Q of A, picked at 0.99 probability, so 99% confidence, that divided by 2. Okay, so essentially we are retaining the template of this factor, but we are replacing the numerator by a quantile picked from the distribution of this spread corresponding to the chosen level of confidence. Okay, so because this is normally distributed, this spread, this quantile will be start with the mean and that's 0 0.01, move to the right, these many multiples, 2.33, of the standard deviation. So that divided by 2 gives you the spread risk factor of 0 0.00791. Okay, essentially it's a number which you are 99% confident will not be exceeded. Coming on to the liquidation cost of stock A, what will that be? Very simply, it's the dollar value of your position. I'm not taking an, an, an absolute value here because I know it's a long position with a positive value. That times half the random spread in this case. Okay, this guy is 8,000, 8,000 by 2, so 4,000 times SA. Okay, so if SA is a normally distributed random variable, 4,000 times SA, which is this guy, will also be a normally distributed random variable and I can write down the 99% confidence interval of this guy to be essentially this. Okay, the mean 4000 times 0 0.01 plus or minus 4000 times 2.58 because it's a two-tailed concept confidence interval so 2.58 that times the standard deviation of 0 0.0025. This gives me the 99% confidence interval for my liquidation cost. Okay, let's move on to the next question and this is about calculating the cost of liquidating the entire portfolio, I mean both stock A and stock B in a stressed market this time. Okay, and this cost of liquidation has to be calculated at the 99% confidence level. Okay, so I'll be using the same formula which I arrived at in the first question. It's just that in this formula, I have replaced the constant spread encountered in the normal market by a random spread encountered in a stressed market. Okay, same formula, but on the right hand side, I have random numbers sitting here, random spreads. Okay, now to arrive at this guy at a certain chosen level of confidence, in our example, that's 99%, I'll need the distribution of this guy. Okay, so SI, individually speaking, these spreads are normally distributed. When I take a linear combination of these spreads, it tells me that the cost of liquidation should also be normally distributed. Okay, I can very easily arrive at the mean value of this LC, that's no problem. The problem would arise in calculating the standard deviation of this guy. Okay, because for calculating the standard deviation, I need to know what is the dependence structure of these individual spreads. What is the correlation between individual spreads? Okay, now to make my lives simple, and actually, you know, what I'm about to do is also backed by what we see empirically as well. Let's assume that all spreads move in the same direction. Let's assume that all spreads are perfectly correlated. So pairwise correlations between any two spreads are equal to one. 
okay so if that is the case our lives become super simple and the liquidation cost at 99% confidence can simply be arrived at by taking this formula and replacing all these spreads by their respective 0.99 quantiles okay and that's what we have written here see same formula it's just that si individually speaking have been replaced by their respective 0.99 quantiles okay so for our portfolio the liquidation cost at 99 percent confidence in a stressed market will be equal to two positions so n is equal to two the first one would have a liquidation cost of 8000 times the 0.99 quantile of spread of stock a divided by two plus 10,000 that times the 0.99 quantile of the spread of stock b divided by two okay so net net it gives me a total cost of liquidation of 221.55 dollars okay see how this cost of liquidation is appreciably greater than the cost of liquidation in the normal market in the first question okay finally let's come to the last question and that is to calculate the liquidity adjusted var of my portfolio at a one day horizon and 99 percent confidence so for this purpose we will need to make use of this input data and alongside we would need this information about the correlation between the returns of stock a and stock b okay so let's do this let's calculate the individual var of stock a that will be simply equal to z corresponding to 0.99 that times the daily volatility of stock a that times the dollar value of the stock a position okay we are given that the mean return of both stock a and stock b are individually equal to zero and therefore they don't figure in these calculations so var of stock a comes to this guy var of stock b same formula would give you 419.4 okay let's aggregate both these vars using the variance covariance aggregation approach var of the entire portfolio will simply be equal to this guy squared plus this guy squared plus two times one because this guy is a long position times minus one because this guy is a short position times the correlation between stock a and stock b that's 0.72 that times var of a var of b take a square root and you get the var of the entire portfolio to be 307 dollars okay the liquidity adjusted var which was our final goal is equal to the var plus the cost of liquidation please note that this var is calculated assuming we are working with mid prices okay and therefore this var has to be adjusted upwards to take into account the liquidation cost and arrive at the liquidity adjusted var okay and this comes to 528.55 okay this solved example was for us to understand how liquidity trading risk is captured both in the normal market and in the stressed market scenario and in the end arrive at the liquidity adjusted bar for a simple portfolio okay